Good day, Grade 10s. Welcome to our last lesson on functions. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at interpretation of graphs. What we're actually going to be doing is basically using our knowledge that we've learnt and gained um, over the last couple of videos, and we are going to apply it to different situations. So the first situation is a typical exam question. In fact, all the questions in this section are going to be typical exam questions. It says, given a general equation, y is equal to ax squared plus q. y is equal to ax squared plus q. ax squared plus q. Determine the equation of the graph below. And we've got this graph. And it's got two points on it, 0, 3, and 1, 1. And they're asking us to determine the equation of it. I mean, determine the actual equation. Now, they're not getting the exams go determine the equation of parabola. They're just going to give you this. And you need to be able to realize from the equation that this is a parabola. The drawing does help, obviously. So what are we going to do? What we could do is we could substitute in points, but before we do that, we can use our knowledge. And we know that the Q in the parabola equation is the stands for the, the Q is the Y cut it where it cuts the y-axis and we can see from here that this is 0, 3 that that's where it cuts the y-axis so therefore our equation becomes y is equal to ax squared plus 3 right now we can use this point here which is 1 1 in case you can't see it and we can substitute in these values 1 and 1 and we can solve for a so let's do that we've got 1 is equal to a 1 squared plus 3 to solve for a we need to isolate it both so we're going to get rid of the plus 3 we're going to take it to the other side so it becomes 1 minus 3 is equal to 1 squared is 1 1 times a is just a so therefore we've got minus 2 equals a so we can rewrite this as y is equal to minus 2x squared plus 3 so let's just look at this graph. Do you see that this equation is a negative and this parabola is a sad parabola? So we expected there to be a negative. And it goes through plus 3, which it does. And it looks right. So therefore, I would like you to always, don't just use the numbers and get an equation and don't just, and then not look at it to see if it matches what is drawn. Let's look at another example. This time we've got a hyperbola. It says use the sketch below to determine the values of A and Q. So we've got two points this time. We've got minus 1, 2 and we've got 1, 0. Notice that we haven't been told what the horizontal asymptote is. So we don't know what Q is so we can't fill it in. So what we need to do then is we need to get, we're probably going to have to use both of these points. So we're going to substitute them in, but what I always do is I always substitute in the one that's got on an axis. So if you've got two on an axis, that's awesome, you can choose either. But in this case, we've just got here where it cuts the x-axis, which is 1, 0. So I'm going to substitute that into here. So we're going to sub in 1, 0. So that means that 0 is equal to a over 1 plus q. Therefore, minus q is equal to a, because I've just taken the q across. So now we've got that. So that doesn't help us at all, but it helps us a little bit. Let's see what we can do with the next one. Let us substitute in now. We're going to sub in. We're going to sub in the next point, which is minus 1, 2. Okay, so if we do that, we've got 2 is equal to a over minus 1 plus q. So you see that we've got two variables there, which is a bit frustrating. But we also know that minus q equals a, or we could say therefore the q is equal to minus a. So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to substitute it in to where the q is. So then what I have is 2 is equal to a over minus 1 plus minus a. So do you see now I've only got one variable. So now life is easy because 
a divided by minus 1 is minus a, plus times a minus is minus a, and that all equals 2. So 2 is equal to minus 2a, and therefore we can say that a is equal to minus 1, which is awesome. So therefore our equation is going to be y is equal to minus 1 over x, and then we need our q. Ah, so let's see how we get our q. We know that a is equal to minus 1, so then we can substitute back into that and we go q is equal to minus times by minus 1, which is just plus 1. And that's wonderful because that is plus 1. So now again, let's look at this. Do you see that the q is plus 1 and our horizontal asymptote is above the x-axis, so that is perfect. We also see that this is in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, and because it's in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, what do we know? We know that therefore it should be a negative graph, which we've got, so yay, it worked, well done. Now let's look at our final example for the day. We're going to do something a little bit more complicated, but this is something that you should be expecting in your tests and exams. We've got the graphs of y is equal to minus x squared plus 4, which we should recognize as the parabola, but happily for us, they've written it down here. y is equal to minus x squared plus 4, and we've got y is equal to x minus 2, which we should recognize as a straight line, but again, happily, they've labeled it for us as y is equal to x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the straight line in blue just to differentiate it from the black parabola. Right, now they've asked us to organize work out and find the coordinates of A, B, C, and D. So let's see what they are. There's A, B, C, and D. So you can see that they are the X and Y coordinates of the two different graphs. So let's start with the straight line. Do you agree that since we've got the equation Y is equal to X minus 2, we know from our equation that that there is the y cut. Therefore, we know that this point here is minus 2. Okay, nice and easy. Then let's get b. Now, b is where the straight line cuts the x-axis. So if I had to write a coordinate for that, it would be x, and what would the y value be? The y value would be naught, because everything along here is naught. So that means I can substitute naught into this y and I can get the x, x value. So let's do that. We've got naught is equal to x minus 2, therefore x is going to equal to 2. So therefore our x coordinate, I mean our, yeah, for, for b is going to be 2 naught. Brilliant. Now let's look at the parabola. And I'm going to write in black so you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got the equation now of y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. And again, from our standard form, which is y is equal to minus x squared plus, or sorry, ax squared plus q, we know that q is where it cuts the y-axis. Therefore, this point here is obviously going to be naught 4. Now the only other number we need to find now is a, and a is where the parabola cuts the x-axis, it also cuts it at b. Okay, so let's solve that. What is 0 at that line? Do you agree that the line therefore again would be x, 0? So we need to find what this value is when, x, when y is 0. So we're going to say, okay fine, we've got y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. Therefore, we've got naught is equal to minus x squared plus 4. I want to solve for this, but in order to solve for this, I don't like the minus in the front. So I'm going to go 0 is equal to x squared minus 4. And I'm hoping you recognize that this is the difference of two squares. So we can write x minus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x is going to equal to 2 or x is going to equal to minus 2. But we already know about the x equals 2. There it is there. So obviously this point here is when x is minus 2. So this point here is minus 2, 0. 
And remember I said to you in the previous video that when they ask for things like the coordinates of A, B, C, D, you don't just leave it hanging everywhere. You write it out nicely. So because I've got limited space here, I'm going to write it up here. So A, do you agree, is minus 2, 0. B is going to be 2, 0. C is 0, 4. And D is 0, minus 2. Excellent. So now we've got the coordinates done. Now they want the co coordinates of E. Now let's just change color so we can do this different question in a different color. So they want the coordinates of E. Now if we look carefully we can see that E is where the parabola crosses the straight line. It also crosses at B but they're asking us for the point E. So do you agree that the y value of the parabola here has to equal the y value of the straight line? Because that is one specific point. Okay? And the x value of the parabola has to equal the x value of the straight line. So let's think about that. We know the y value of the parabola has to equal the y value of the straight line. But we have an equation for the y value of the parabola. It is minus x squared plus 4. So it becomes minus x squared plus 4 is equal to the y value of the straight line, which is given by x minus 2, so that there is x minus 2. So let's solve for that. Let's take everything onto the right-hand side. So you've got 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 2 minus 4. Let's simplify by adding like terms and the only like terms we've got is that. So we've got x squared plus x minus 6. I'm really hoping you recognize that as a quadratic equation. So now we can factorize. So the factors are what multiply by what gives you x squared? Well obviously it's x and x. We know that because this is a minus the two signs in our brackets have to be a plus and a minus, okay, because they have to be different. Now we need two factors of 6 that when multiplied together give us 6 and which add up give us 3. So if we think of our factors of 6, our factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6, whoopsie, 6. So 1 times 6 gives us 6, but 6 minus 1 gives us 5, and 1 plus 6 gives us 7, which does not give us an implied 1 there. Okay, so then we've got 3 times 2. 3 times 2 gives us 6, and 3 minus 2 gives us 1. So we want 3 minus 2. So that means that this has to be a plus 3, and this has to be a minus 2, and that equals 0. Therefore, our x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0, therefore, oopsie, sorry I touched the arrow, <laughs> therefore x is equal to minus 3 or x equals 2. But we know about this point already, it's that b point there. So this point here, the x value, has to therefore be minus 3. Now how do we get the y value? To get the y value we need to substitute either into the parabola, or we need to substitute into the straight line. I personally find the straight line equation way easier than the parabola, so therefore I'm going to go y is equal to the x is minus 3, minus 2, therefore the y value is minus 5. So therefore this is minus 5. Sure. Okay, we're almost finished. Last question. And the last question is actually a pretty easy question. I know it looks scary, but it's not. Uh, let's use red. They want the distance of C to D. The distance from C to D. Now that looks like when you go distance, you go, oh, I don't know how to work out distance, but in this case we do. It's very easy. And the reason is because th this is on our y-axis. This is on our y-axis. So do you see that C, okay, the y value of C is 4, and the y value of D is minus 2. Therefore, this here has to be 4 in length, 4 units, and this is 2. Therefore, the distance for C to D is just 4 
plus 2 which equals 6. There you go. So grade 10s. This might have seemed a little bit overwhelming so I need you to go and practice watch the video again if it seems a little bit overwhelming then go do lots and lots of examples and once you've done that go and try the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day. Bye. Thank you.